Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to the final day of action at the Champions Chess Tour 2023. It's Magnus Carlsen versus Wesley So. Today is the second and final day, and Magnus Carlsen leads one to nothing. Wesley So must win the second set and force a tiebreak and potentially cause one of the biggest upsets in recent chess history, or Magnus Carlsen will win yet another event and add another feather to his cap. Today is also Leon Edwards versus Colby Covington, so I had to wear my best Bruce Buffer uh, sport coat, which uh, I've been getting dressed by my main man, Joe Bananas, Australian fashion designer, and um, couldn't be happier. So I, uh, I have been... Uh, hopefully you've enjoyed some of these blazers. I've enjoyed some of these blazers. Um... And uh, contrary to comments in the live chat, no, I am not being dressed by my mom. Although, if she was dressing me, she would have impeccable taste in clothing. My friends, yesterday Wesley So opened up the rapid match with the move B3. That was a weird move. But it was even weirder when Wesley So opened up the rapid portion of the match on the second day with the move B3. This was strange. This was definitely a strange decision. I mean, he does not go for e4, he does not go for d4, he does not go for a main line. He plays pawn to b3, trying to develop the bishop on the diagonal. And Magnus, for a second day in a row, plays g6 and knight f6. He did the exact same thing yesterday, and you'll notice Magnus today spent 20 seconds playing g6 instead of 40 seconds. But he definitely was surprised by b3 because it's unconventional. I'm not saying it's bad, it's just... It's a little bit weird, right? So g6, knight f6, and this time, before he plays c4, Wesley decides, I'm going to put bishops on both diagonals and actually not let Magnus play b6, because the way Wesley played this yesterday is he played c4, and then Magnus put bishops like this right away. But this time, Wesley says, okay, I'm going to do it my way. I'm getting my bishops out before my knights, breaking traditional chess principles. Uh, and so what Magnus did is he set up in a King's Indian way, right? This is a King's Indian setup for black. G6, D6, knight F6, bishop G7. There is a, you know, I, I, I've had many videos talking about how to play this setup. There's a very famous uh, piece of short form content where I say, you know, you can play this piece of con you can play this opening against anything, and then you see Hikaru uh, reacting to a clip of like somebody pre moving some opening and winning it, uh, while Black is pre moving this setup. That was a very long winded way of saying you can play this against everything, but you, you shouldn't pre move it because your opponent could catch you off guard. Now, something really strange happens right in this position. Wesley does not castle. Okay, he doesn't castle yet, and first he plays here. Magnus, seeing this, goes, oh, well, I'm going to go try to take the center, right? I want to develop my knight, but I actually want to go here and take the entire center because Wesley's actually refusing to do so. Wesley, seeing this and seeing Magnus wanting to go here, does not play the traditional castles in d4, I think because he was actually quite worried about a position that looks like this, where then black just basically starts firing away at white's king. Wesley doesn't want that, so he moves his e-pawn a second time, which is kind of weird, because he just did that. And right around here, I realized, I, look at how much time Wesley spent, two minutes on this move. And right around here, I was interviewing Fabiano Caruana on the live broadcast, and I kind of asked him, like, what's, I'm, I'm sensing hesitancy. Just like in the first game, and look at Magnus, Magnus just starts, you know, if you don't want to take the fight to me, Given I have the right prerequisites, I'm going to take the fight to you. Magnus has a massive psychological advantage at this point in the match. Because yesterday, they played a match that was three draws and a borderline win for Magnus, where it was never really... Like, Magnus was literally not in danger of losing any of those four games. And he just picks up where he left off. And look at this very timid approach from Wesley. And a move here that was highly criticized by Fabiano. By the way, I mean, what is going on here, right? Just a lot of... Wesley playing a lot of moves that are like... Just getting out. Just a little bit. Just a little bit. And right here, Fabiano said he didn't understand this move from Wesley. Ah, uh, my neck is stiff. Ugh. He said if Wesley wanted to win a game, why not imbalance the position? Just why not create D takes C4 on the board, which could create a little bit of complication, a little bit of imbalance, something to play for. 
because as Fabiano said, the, what happens now is that it's a symmetrical pawn structure, no B pawns, but black is doing completely fine. Black can play like bishop d7, queen a5, rook b8, um, and he well, plays the bishop out this way, rook d1, and uh, Magnus begins taking over. I mean, he's just got a minus one position. He's going to seize control of the B file. At some point, he might play D5, but he also could transfer the pieces in a closed position. He also could play F5. And we're getting a sense from Wesley that, like, look how many pieces are on the back rank. Magnus plays knight FD7. He's ready to bring the knight to the queen side. Finally, Wesley wakes up and plays D4. But but now he's like ill-equipped to deal potentially with the consequences of opening up this position. So now e takes d4, knight takes d4, and Magnus gives up the bishop. He actually gives up the bishop that is protecting his king to get this massive implant of horses in the position to get a horse tattoo. Apparently queen b8 retreating, defending and getting the knight in here uh, is even more powerful. But knight e5 is a nice move. And despite being a pawn down, I mean, he he is just swarming, and, and, and Wesley's really struggling to defend his queen side. This is all under attack, and that means that could be under attack, and that could be under pressure. Now, well, I'm just saying that square, like the queen would not hang it. The queen would not be blundered. Queen d1 and just queen a3. And I mean, the rook is just stuck. Wesley's rook completely stuck. He tries to defend it. Here comes Magnus. Bishop b3, bishop c4 defending. And also, Magnus has, a, has an outside pass pawn. He has a pass pawn that has no pawn stopping its path to the end of the board. And knight e2, queen c5 is just, is just a brutal situation. The rook on d6 is under fire. The queen is being pressured over here. Or not being pressured, but rather pressuring. This one gets into a scramble. Magnus actually gets down to 16 seconds on the clock. A little bit spooky, but he keeps everything under control. For a while, the game is a little bit chaotic. Apparently, rook d8, a mistake. As he tried to sacrifice his bishop to play rook d1 check. But Wesley does not seize the moment and instead goes here... And after a4, uh, bad news. The rook is being deflected, and um, rook takes b5, rook takes d3, and Magnus is just cleaning up. And um, this is just about the worst start to a game that you could ask for, to a match that you could ask for if you are Wesley. So Magnus has too many pass pawns. Nice idea. Knight f1 check, and the rook is going to come to e1. Wesley cannot promote. And the game is over as the king walks in. Three pass pawns for Magnus. And um, the, ma the match is just as good as done. Um, Wesley, yesterday, you know, lo loses a game that could have gone either way. It was a rook end game. It was very, very tense. And frankly, it couldn't have gone either way. Um, it was very, very tense. Let me just respond uh, to my wonderful wife. I don't think I told her uh, that I'm recapping. I said, I'm recapping. I will reply later. I love you. There you go. You got to you got to listen, my 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 fellow young men. You got to you can't be afraid of showing your emotions. Life lessons with red blazer Gotham chess. Anyway, this is um th this is a nightmare. Uh, this is not the Wesley that we needed to show up. You, you will remember, by the way, do you remember from the round robin stage that Wesley sacrificed like four pieces and checkmated Magnus? That was insanity. And this is just not, this is not it. And uh, Magnus is now just looking to put the match away. He plays E4. Wesley knows he's got to go for it. He plays the Sicilian defense. And Magnus plays this sideline Sicilian with Bishop C4 and Knight F3. Uh, and, um, and, and is just playing in a way to get Wesley out of any sort of prep. Uh, Wesley plays d5, bishop b5, check, king to f8. Voluntarily losing the right to castle because he's actually threatening to trap Magnus's bishop, and Magnus pushes the knight back and then plays a5 and sacrifices the pawn. Right, so Magnus, I don't know if sacrifice or loses, but he's down a pawn. He just needs to stop b5. So he plays here. Now you may wonder, how is that stopping b5 at all? Well, white would be playing bishop d2. And you see, if, if the queen tries to go back, then I'm going to, you know, take on, uh, I'm going to take on b5, and you're not actually going to be able to, uh, right? So a, b, rook a8. So this one gets locked early. And it's about time that Wesley stopped playing super solid positions like that against Magnus. Super slow positions, positions where he's not actually getting much of anything. And instead, we need a mess. If Wesley's going to beat Magnus, he needs a mess. But let's not forget, I mean, 
Magnus is still in good shape in this position. And we have take, take, h6, h4, and I have no idea how Wesley is going to get a single piece out. He can't move the bishop forward. He can't move the knight forward. He can't move this knight forward. He can't really move his f-pawn forward because then that's going to get weak. So he moves something else forward, and now Magnus is just one and a half points of advantage. I mean, he is just an absolute juggernaut, not to be denied. Uh, he, can, he has a plethora of options here. The computer really likes this move h5, either making black take and damage his structure long term, or make black overextend, at which point black just can't move a thing. He can't move any pawn forward without creating more weakness, and then white is going to begin expanding over here, put the knight in here, control the e file, maybe move this knight and play f4 and shred open the... like terrible position but instead instead of that magnus plays b4 which is still a very very good move the computer really likes it and magnus gives away this and takes this and it's just a matter of time like until the avalanche just goes straight down into wesley's position wesley doesn't have a d or c pawn he also can't move these and and, and really white is going to be the one calling the shots here look at this position i mean what it's just 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 unbelievable play from magnus wesley got nothing absolutely nothing here the king goes to g7 the knight drives its way into the black position and he, it's on the verge of being over it's on the verge of being over black can't move a single thing like let's say black plays a move like knight c5 just you know a lackadaisical move you're already looking at tactics it just doesn't quite work but something like queen f7 is literally checkmate like th th this is made on the board i don't know what wesley is going to do here he ends up taking the knight and the queen slides back to c8 but magnus's pawn is two squares away from queening White can play a move like rookie one. White can play a move like h5. All of these things look pretty good. All black has is this e5 move, but it's not really scaring anybody. But Magnus plays rookie one. Apparently a mistake. Apparently, again, better to play h5. This move has been sort of begging to be played for a little bit. Uh, and uh, now coming back and hitting that pawn is what Stockfish wants once you give it a little bit of time to think. Yeah, but rookie eight and again like c5 advancing over here magnus decides to undevelop and then put the bishop on this diagonal with good pressure but wesley now begins creating a barrier and we are in a scramble 140 versus three minutes on the clock g4 magnus going for an attack wesley playing king to g8 stepping off of the diagonal of oops off the diagonal of the dark squared bishop the knight goes to d2 with opportunity to potentially remove that knight from the board and continue this attack now rookie six magnus plays g5 attacking with the king side pawns takes takes the computer wants this or this but what it doesn't want is this move given a major question mark and it is a really really curious decision because white is going to play knight e4 and just locomotive you know what's one thing missing from this position from this move g5 it has less to do with the knight it has to do with the opening of the h file and if you put that knight there it is a target for a long-term attack and magnus carlson is about to crash through and make it two to nothing which would be a worst case scenario for wesley so who is trying not to get eliminated wesley grabs that pawn though wesley's up two pawns we can't underestimate that and now Magnus plays d4 with 30 seconds remaining on the clock. The idea of d4 is actually quite clever because black can't take that pawn with the pawn because he would lose the rook. He also can't take the rook, the pawn with the rook because he's going to lose the rook. So what do you do here if you are playing black? Well, you sacrifice the rook! A brilliant move from Wesley. And as it turns out, you actually can. You actually can do this. Bishop takes, e takes. And Wesley actually has some past pawns. Look at these pawns. Now, we are far away from that. Those pawns don't really matter right now. What matters right now is the attack on the H-file. What matters right now is the infiltration of the knight. What matters right now is the infiltration of the rook. But the computer is pointing to an advantage for Magnus, rook to, uh, for, for Wesley, rook to e7, losing to queen c5, which is a fork of the rook and the pawn. But instead of that, Wesley plays knight c5 with a major miss. The queen should have gone to that square. Rook e1 played by Magnus doubling the rooks. Now Wesley starts panicking. Rook f8. Wesley below a minute. Wesley should not have undeveloped his rook. He needed to play actively. Queen f5 or knight f8 transferring it over here. But he plays passively. Wesley hesitant. Magnus steps forward with queen h4 with 15 seconds remaining on the clock. Wesley panics and plays pawn to b3. And now Magnus is completely winning if he brings another pawn.
pawn. If Magnus plays f4 and rook e5 and f5, he is winning. Why is this move winning? The knight constantly monitors the pawn. The pawn is going to need the help of another pawn, and something like king g2, rook h1, anchoring the, in that pawn on f5, on g5 rather, prevents all counterplay in the position. Magnus plays king g2. He is now just moments away from landing a fatal blow on the h-file. Queen to f5 played by Wesley, who now also has 15 seconds remaining. This is completely insane. Magnus, rook e5. Apparently a mistake because the queen can go back patrolling the seventh rank. Now, rook d5 attacking the queen. The queen, to c the queen goes to c7. Rook h1, f6. Magnus is crashing through, but he's only got five seconds on the clock. He plays knight e4. Black can play knight takes e4. Wesley has 10 seconds to make a decision or he's going to lose on time. Wesley makes a, ma a major, major, major mistake. And now, the best move here for white is to be patient and go for that pawn instead. But instead, he goes here. Tons of pressure building up over here. Knight takes g5 is the only move that doesn't lose. You have to play knight takes g5 and then you have to be ready to run your king to the other side of the board. But all of a sudden, Wesley so has lost the game. Oh my goodness. Magnus Carlsen is completely winning. He is completely winning if he plays knight takes h7. Because knight takes h7, if something like rook takes f2, the king goes to g1. And this looks very scary, but actually white wins. Black is a move away from checkmating white, and it is actually white who wins the game. But this is very dangerous to calculate with five seconds on the clock. And instead of that, Magnus does this, but that is still a winning move. Seven seconds each, queen f7, and now he has to be brave and take the rook. And for whatever reason, Magnus in this position goes, wait, if I trade everything and then I take, it's check and I'm up a rook. Take, 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 check. That's exactly what happens. Take, 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 take with check, but... Magnus is losing. He's losing. What he should have done instead was just taken the rook. If king takes, he swarms the king with rook d8, queen h7. If knight takes, queen h8 is mate. If queen, knight f8, you can't actually take the knight with anything. You can't take the knight with anything. You have to go here first, force the king in front of the rook. But instead of that, all of a sudden, Magnus is losing. Rook d6, and Wesley so, his pawns are coming down the board. And there's nothing, there's nothing he can do. Magnus, so rook b8, and now Magnus just has to force some sort of cage around the king, and he nearly does! <gasps> Magnus is threatening knight h7 with a draw. Wesley can make two different queens in this position, but making a queen with throw the game- Oh my god. How is that even possible? Making a queen with throw the game. Because king e8, king g8 is a box. And now with 12 seconds on the clock, Wesley finds the only winning move. Give a check. Give a check and go here. And Magnus resigned. The point is, you deflect the knight away from the f6 square. You can give me a check, but you cannot come back. And my king will run away while both of my pawns are threatening to promote. I mean, this is a gangster final position, right? It's a... It's a... It's a, it's a Picture perfect situation of the threat is more valuable than the execution. Knight h5 and Wesley So is back. What a game. Magnus was super unhappy after this, uh, as you might imagine. I mean, typical, right? If you're like the greatest in a sport, it's like Djokovic smashing his racket. I don't think he did that, but that was nuts. And now it's one-to-one, -one and it's Wesley's first win over Magnus in a rapid game. He didn't beat him yesterday. First win in six games. D4, knight f6. C4, e6. And we have a Nimso Indian. Queen c2, d5. This is a very cutting edge line. Black takes. Then black puts the knight on e4 attacking the queen and just starts trying to mess around in the center of the board. A very forcing line. White plays d c5. Magnus plays knight c6 and queen a5 check. And he's basically just trying to use white's early kind of strange development of not developing on this side of the board against him. Then he grabs this, grabs this, takes the pawn. He knows that trade is going to happen. And when it's all said and done, we have bishop and knight, bishop and knight, same color bishop, light square bishop, exact same pawns. We have EFGH as well as A and B. And um, life is good. Life is good. Position is very balanced. And it really did seem like after the absolute chaos of the previous game, the players kind of needed this. Oh, my neck is so st stiff from sitting and looking at chess boards for like a week straight. Queen e7, bishop e8, very passive but very massive position as well. Bishop e2 and... Um, both guys just kind of playing solidly. 
position is symmetrical, and at some point, maybe they're going to clash. We have a Rook trade. All right, Rook c4, ambitious move potentially by Wesley, looking to create a threat of a checkmate, but Magnus just gets in there real quick. And okay, I mean, if you play h4, h5, that's real nice, but I don't think anybody's going to be blundering checkmate. Queen c1 check, queens are off, and we have the following position, which is maybe microscopically better for the guy that has the knight. Normally, a bishop is better than a knight in an endgame, but when the structure is a little bit goofy like that, you know, we, we, we can agree to disagree. Um, also, you know, any intermediate player might lose this with either color, but now we go to this endgame. Now, I would argue that this endgame is actually probably better practically for, again, the guy that has the better structure, and, you know, many intermediates make simple mistakes, but at the highest level, this is really just equality. F4, bishop, b5, the knight is pushed back, Magnus takes... And Magnus' structure is slightly worse, but he, he you, you can't beat a bishop with a knight. I mean, the, the bishop is just simply too fast. Wesley putting a bunch of pawns on the dark squares. In fact, all his pieces are on dark squares, who are not the king. Um, speaking of the king, absolutely nothing to be done. A total fortress created. White just defends everything. And uh, after the absolute insanity that we just saw, this is kind of a nice stabilizer. You got to give credit. Magnus basically showed up with a... With, a, uh, with an opening against the Nimso Indian that was very good. He plays this line d5, taking early this interesting early provocative knight move rather than playing castles or anything like that. And um, it's a line where basically white gets... Black gets nothing, absolutely nothing. White has a slight microscopic advantage due to the slightly more uh, active nature of the bishops like magnus's bishop is like not really impressing anybody uh but uh you know it's solid and this game was 99.2 versus 99.4 magnus gets white i mean that was just about the best type of game that you could have asked for coming out of a chaotic game that you ultimately lost and magnus says <clears throat> my turn i'm gonna try it and wesley plays c5 and something interesting a couple of years ago when the Champions Chess Tour final started. Here's a fun fact about this game. This is called the semi tirage okay? And historically, Black has played CD5, Knight D5, E4, take, 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 Bishop B4, Bishop D2, and Black has gone for this solid setup, which is slightly worse, as you can see by the computer, but ultimately, Black would equalize. But about two or three years ago, this variation, CD5, CD4, a mirror image capture was almost invented by Wesley So during the pandemic. There was a lot of online events, and Wesley So was playing the symmetrical line, and it actually almost broke the queen's pawn. Like, to play this setup with white, if black played c5, they were really trying to kill the game. And apparently, Wesley So did that a lot to Magnus. Early on, two or three years ago. Some of you might have been watching the early days of the Champions Chess Tour online. Some of you might have not. So Magnus enters the thing Wesley invented to try to win the entire Champions Chess Tour. Now, back in the day, um, the main line was considered like, the, 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 sometimes you can play queen a4 check and, and force something in front of the king, but after queen d4 ed, a major line used to be e4. They stopped playing that because after e4, there would be a huge exchange of pieces. Like, you know, there's just too many trades. You know, and there was a line, knight g5, bishop e6, you would play knight e6, you would damage black structure, then you would, you know, white has a lot of development, but black is a pawn up, and in a very high level of analysis, white can't win. White just can't win. I mean, it's really difficult. So everybody started looking elsewhere. How to get an advantage? Well, against Fabiano earlier in the event, Magnus went knight e5, and he posed a lot of problems. He went on to win that game. This time, Magnus says, bishop d2. So Magnus plays bishop d2. I'm not sure if the move bishop d2 has been played before. You may be wondering why he didn't take his pawn or why he, did, why he didn't damage his structure, why he didn't take the pawn. The question is, you wait and see, bozo. <laughs> that is the point. Because the computer says this move is completely fine. Now knight bd7, interesting. So the idea might have been to make black waste time uh, or commit the knight there. Maybe that's a, another major point rather than putting the knight actively on the c6 square. Now Magnus takes... And now Wesley plays this move h6 right away, covering anything going to g5. Apparently the computer highly prefers f6, wants to keep that pawn where it is, but Wesley does that a little bit later. And um, he plays f6, and now he walks his king to safety. Okay, So the king is saved behind the pawns. Black is basically two or three accurate moves away from 
stabilizing the position and getting equality, which is sort of the point of this line, right? Wesley sort of invented this line, quote unquote, um, where black is always under a tiny bit of pressure, but if you defend well, you sort of kill the game. Like white cannot find a way to get an advantage against you. And he's, he's just there. He's almost there. Magnus plays f4 after spending two minutes. Magnus does not like to push pawns. He doesn't like to push pawns very much. It's a very, very big committal decision. Now, if the pawn gets there, it's nice. So black is going to have to be ready, and black can't play f5. <clears throat> he can't play f5 himself because he's going to get hit with this move. And if g6, that rook is hanging. So after bishop h8, you just hang a full rook. So that doesn't work, right? So you can't do that because of bishop h5, which would force the king into a passive situation, either there or there. So what do you play? Well, apparently, you play h5, uh, which stops bishop h5, and then you put the bishop on c4. So that's a very tough move to play if a few moves ago you've played h6, but apparently you just have to accept that reality. But now Wesley plays this. Wesley decides to give away the bishop for the knight, and his logic is, I need to catch up on time. Not like this time. I need to catch up on time like on the board. I I'm behind in development. I play bishop to c5. Spends half his time. Magnus takes, and now rook d1, losing a major chunk of the advantage. Apparently the best move for white was to play bishop d4 right away. To play bishop d4 right away to try to get maybe that pawn. For example, if you allow rook c2, then you play bishop f3 with very good long-term pressure on the pawns. If something like b6 is played, you can try to trap the rook and make it feel unpleasant. But in <clears throat> instead of that, rook d1 is played, and after knight b6, Wesley's out of the woods. And, you know, Magnus is going to have to try to squeeze water out of a stone like he always does, right? It's one of those typical Magnesian games, symmetrical structure, advantage of the two bishops. Maybe he's going to put the bishop there. Maybe he's going to double up, try to get in on that square, target over here. Maybe here and here, damage the pawns, long-term advantage, light square to weaknesses. Wesley just poking at his pawns. Magnus plays b4. Ooh. Ooh. And the point is, if rook a2, if rook a2, bishop h5 wins. How? You take the knight, and then you get in. If king g8, you actually build a box. You don't let the king out. And the same of g6, you have f5 shredding open the white position. So suddenly Wesley's like, uh-oh, uh-oh. Rook d5, bishop f3. And now Wesley needed to stand down. Wesley needed to realize, I can't keep, I can't keep playing pinball with Magnus. Because if I do, and I go here, Magnus is not going to play a3. Magnus traps my rook. And you are looking at the final moments of a rook trapped on the edge of the board. Wesley goes in with a fork. And the threat is rook here takes bishop c4 skewer. But Magnus, as we know now, is a subscriber of the Gotham Chess YouTube channel. And what is worth more than a bishop and a rook combined? You. You are worth more than a bishop and a rook combined. But so is Wesley's king. Bishop to h5 check. The idea being that even though you've now created two problems for yourself, one of them is solved, and one of them is now given back to black. ACDC. Bishop c4. Rook d7 check escaping all the danger. Rook d6 check escaping the danger. And rook c1. And all of a sudden, the fumes have run out. Knight to e4. Rook to d4. The danger has been evaded. It's a fork. Wesley so resigns. Magnus Carlsen wins the Champions Chess Tour 2023. 200,000 bucks. Not much more to say. An awesome, awesome event. Commiserations to Wesley. A uh, really commendable performance by everybody. Everybody in the event. Nodir Bekab Dusatur of Absolute Beast from Uzbekistan. He is a World Rapid Champion. He will go back to Samarkand uh, <clears throat> in Uzbekistan to play the World Rapid and Blitz Championship. Fabiano Caruana put on an uh, really, like, to me, almost like a, a, at a level, Magnus Fabi was almost like uh, it was like Yugi versus Kaiba. That's what that was. Semifinals of Battle City. That's a Yu Gi Oh reference. I mean, like, th that was the final of the final, maybe. Um, Hikaru, a crazy event, almost a comeback. Denis Lazovic, the wonder kid uh, from Belarus. Maxim Vashelagrav putting on fights left and right. And, and um, I think I named everybody. Ali Reza Firuja. Ali Reza Firuja. That Ali Reza Firuja is, continues to be the biggest wild card in chess, the biggest what if in chess. 
Um, we will see what his future holds, and I'm, I'm very curious and excited to look forward to it. Um, I'm going to go do some more recording and some more media here in Toronto. And uh, what a special week it's been. Um, you know, for me, uh, I, uh, I was on a radio interview. I did two TV interviews here in Canada. They were so welcoming. They were so nice, as Canadians are. Um, and just, just uh, really excited to be a part of the future of building a media package, a chess tour for chess, taking all of this to new heights. Shout out to all of you that tuned in uh, every single day. And um, that's all. Magnus interview to be published quite soon. Uh, I, I think you guys will like it. It's about it's going to be like a 15 minute video. And uh, that's all. Congratulations to Magnus and Wesley. Now get out of here.